Hi there, this is Jeff here with a video on the Lorentz curve. Now the Lorentz curve and the associated concept, the Gini coefficient, are super important if you get exam questions on inequality. The Lorentz curve is a, is a graphical representation of the distribution, or the unequal distribution, of income or wealth in, in a country. And the curve basically plots the proportion of total income, or total wealth, that is held by each percentile or each decile of the population, ranging from the poorest to the richest. Now, from the Lorentz curve, we can then calculate the Gini coefficient, which is a key measure of income or wealth inequality. So here's how we, we plot the Lorentz curve. On the y-axis, you see there the cumulative percentage of income. So all the income in a country, uh, once we get to 100%, that captures all the income. On the left-hand side, on the x-axis, uh, the poorest households by income, across to the right-hand side, the richest. So we could have the poorest 10%, then the next poor is 10% and so on and so forth. You could split it up into quartiles, into quintiles, into percentiles, but normally we use decile distributions, 10% groups. Now, if there was no income and wealth inequality in a country, you'd be able to plot the Lorentz curve as a straight line, diagonal from left to right, uh, a 45 degree line, a line of equality. Everybody would have the same percentage of income or wealth. So the top 10% uh, would have 10% of the income, the bottom 10% would have 10%. So you'd have a line of equality from left to right. The reality, of course, is different. The Lorentz curve lies below the line of equality. So here's a plot for a country with relatively low inequality. Uh, you can see that the poorest uh, deciles or poorest groupings are not getting their equitable share or equal share of income. Uh, but as we get towards the richest deciles, for example, then the curve becomes skewed and steep they're getting a significant percentage of income. Now, that gap becomes important. The further the Lorentz curve is away from the line of equality, then the higher is the level of income or wealth inequality. It depends what we're measuring. This diagram shows income. Now, let's take a country with a much higher inequality. Can you see here I've drawn a Lorentz curve, which is much more skewed away from the line of equality. So let's compare it again. Low inequality, much higher income inequality. And as a result, the Gini coefficient, as we'll see in a few minutes, will become much higher. The gap, that shaded area between the Lorentz curve and the line of equality, is much higher than it was before. Here's some data for the UK, and it's a few years old, but it fundamentally it hasn't changed really in the last few years. It shows the percentage of disposable income income after tax held by each decile in the UK. And you can see that the bottom 10% held just under 3% of the income. The second decile, 4.9%, uh, and the fifth, the third decile, 58 In fact, all of the deciles bef below and including the sixth decile had less than a 10% share, whereas the richest 10%, the top decile, had 25% of disposable income. Now, this is after tax. So the figures will be much more unequal, as we'll see in a few minutes, uh, before tax. Kind of pre-distribution, if you like. And what I've done there is I've added those figures and made a cumulative share. So you can see that uh, the bottom 10% had 2.9% of the income. The bottom 30% had 13.6% of the income, well below 30. And the bottom half of the population, the five deciles together, had just 28% of the income. So again, the Lorentz curve, don't forget, line of equality. Uh, if there was no inequality, that would be the Lorentz curve. We don't have that in the UK. Here's the figure for the UK. And uh, you can see it's, it's not massively unequal. It's a figure of about, that, that shaded area is about one third of the area underneath that curve. So that's the Lorentz curve for the UK. Now, how do we calculate the Gini coefficient using a Lorentz curve? Well, let's go back to our curve. There's the Lorentz curve shown in orange there. The area A shows essentially the inequality. The Gini coefficient is area A divided by area A plus B. So if there was no inequality, area A would disappear. So it would be zero. If there was perfect inequality, area B would disappear. The Lorentz curve would become, well, basically the x-axis until you get to the richest person in the world who has all the income. So the Gini coefficient is area A divided by area A plus B. 
And in 2022 for the UK, the Gini coefficient was 0.36. That's been relatively steady in recent times. Looking at a bit more detail, the richest fifth of people's mean incomes before taxes and benefits was £107,000 a year. And that was 13 times more than the poorest fifth, first quintile, 8200 So an enormous gap in terms of average incomes before taxes and benefits. After taxes and benefits, of course, the system is mildly progressive. That's reduced to a, a ratio of four times, 79,000 compared with 21,000 approximately. Just over half of people in the UK receive more in welfare benefits than they pay in taxes. So a welfare system is quite important for people on low incomes, the state pension, the job seekers allowance, and of course, the means-tested universal credit. And that's the Gini coefficient for the UK. It went up during the 80s, and it stayed relatively stable, relatively stable in recent times, at or around 0.35, 0.36. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this revision video on the Lorenz Curve.